Okay, uh, I'm Patrick Collier. I work at Air Force Research Labs in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Space Vehicles Directorate. Um, for those of you who are familiar with what we're doing, uh, we just finished a specification called the Vita 78 or Space VPX. It's an enhancement to Open VPX. Okay, so this is all focused on the space market. Um, like Jerry just said, we just got approved on December 7th through a VSO public review. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, just give you an idea of where we are. Um, again, why we're doing this and an idea of the uh, market that we're trying to penetrate and the people that we've talked to. The second thing I'm going to talk about is an effort that we started at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for air vehicles. Um, it's called SOSA or it's a sensor open system architecture effort. Um, it's very similar to what we're doing with Vita 78 um, with respect that we're actually focusing on ISR pods. So if there's any questions about that afterwards, then I'm more than happy to answer them. Okay, so basically what's wrong with the way we do things now in space? Um, essentially, everything that we do are one-off systems. They're expensive. There's vendor lock. Um, there's no way to make any changes unless you go through that type, of, that vendor or that prime. Um, so what we've been told uh, by our people is that we need to look at cost. Cost is king. Cost is what we have to try to reduce. And one way to do this is to use standards. Again, that's why we started this effort, was to try to make use of commercial open standards to make better buying power to give the person who's doing the looking for a system that they want to develop a chance to actually compete with the vendors to find the best possible product. Okay, again, I'm reiterating, um, without Space VPX, you know, we have things like vendor lock. We have situations where you aren't able to make any changes. With Space VPX, we have the ability to go to different types of vendors to look for products that will best fit the needs that we have. So this is all about an 80% rule. We're not trying to completely optimize the system at this point. What we want is the best possible system to get the job done. So what is Space VPX? Again, um, it's a bridge to the space market with Open VPX. That's what we've focused on here with this uh, effort. Um, it's all about looking at um, Open VPX and taking things like the switches, the controllers, payloads like that, and making them um, a focus on that type of market. The thing that we looked at that's different with Open VPX is the fault tolerant aspects in our in our specification, which you definitely need for uh, um, space applications. Um, if there are any questions on that, let me know. Again, I'm flying through this because I want to get to the end chart. <laughs> so the benefits, you know, I'm, I'm like a broken record player. It's all about to the customer um, to give them the best possible choice for the system that they're designing and developing to get to that 80% rule and have the flexibility to meet those needs with cost in mind. Okay, so the update, like I said. We finished on December 7th. We're now in ANSI. Um, right now, we have multiple vendors that are, are slated to use this specification. Um, prototype products should be available Q3, Q4 of this year. That's what I've been told. Um, we have adoption of the space vehicle by multiple large programs, like I just said. So these are not small programs. These are large national programs that are going to use the specification and build to it. Um, we've engaged with multiple NASA centers, uh, Johnson, JPL, Goddard, Ames. They have an interest in using this specification for their future programs. So we're waiting to hear back from them on their um, evaluation of our spec. We've also engaged the European Space Agency. I was in the Netherlands this past December, and there's definite interest in them adopting Space VPX at this point, either wholesale or in part for some of their current or future systems. And I can't see. Um, there's also interest from the tier vendors, too. Um, specifically, there was interest from Thales Alenia. Um, we're waiting for an evaluation from them. Bottom line is that over the period of time that we've been working this specification, we've seen the space market take an interest in this and see that it's like what we think. Using these types of standards is the best way to get what they need for their systems. And you know, for over the past two years, we're starting to see people pick it up and take a look at it and actually want to start to use it. So from my point of view, I think it's a good thing. We're not trying to rush into this. Um, we're trying, I mean, if anybody's familiar with the space market, it takes forever to get anything done around here. Um, so we're very happy that over the past two, two and a half years that we've seen a great number of programs and companies want to make use of this. The biggest thing to keep in mind is that it's the customers that want this, and the customers are driving this to industry, and industry is going to want to make sure that they 
make they want to adopt this so they can get their make their customers happy. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is SOSA Sensor Open System Architecture. Um, I'll talk. I'll be brief on this too, since this has just been going on just a little over a year. But we spent most of the time developing the architecture for this. Again, it's very similar to what we're seeing with Space VPX and that these are high data rate, high performance computing systems. Um, the thing about this is that these are for ISR, these are ISR pods. So the problem that we're looking at now is again, it's the same thing with the military, same thing with the government, that it's all about vendor lock, it's all about one-off systems. And what we want to do is we want to develop a multi-end ISR system that one allows us to have flexibility in mission profiles and flexibility in the type of um, sensors we put on are we able to switch those off and on depending on the mission profile? The same can be said for the back end subsystems for this ISR part or the ISR, pl ISR platform, in that if we can make use of things like VPX, um, open mission systems, FACE, third party software tools, can we actually have the flexibility to change out line replaceable units or the actual the boards themselves to make it flexible for a different type of mission profile? So that's the, that's the sort of the five cent tour for this type of program that we're looking at. And this is, since this is at Wright Pat, this is going to be Air Force wide. So I probably got ahead of myself. So basically, like I just said, that's pretty much what SOSA is. We want to be able to have the flexibility, if you look at this diagram on the chart, for processing, storage, the interconnect, to be able to have a flexible pod that will be able to accommodate different types of mission profiles. What I'm looking from for, I guess, embedded tech trends and VPX is that is there, are there any vendors that are currently looking at high performance computing systems like what we're doing for space VPX, high data rate systems, things like that of that nature, board types, the guts on the board, things like that that we can talk about, and maybe think about doing a standard around this because we have multiple directorates and Air Force Material Command interested in this type of program. Um, how we're approaching this, like I mentioned, we spent a better part of a year trying to get the architecture together. This is very similar if people are familiar with what the Navy has done with their systems in terms of how we approach this. It's all about system requirements, the flexibility to the vendors as well as to the customers. Um, the end result is that as long as we're able to maintain that to some reasonable point, then I think that we can, like the 80% rule, then we can see that we can build successful systems that will provide capability to the end customer. So the capability, like I mentioned, developed this multi-end ISR platform. Um, the SOSA is meant there to support both the hardware and the software components. Each component is designed to be loosely coupled. It's not tightly coupled. Again, these are all standard systems, so they're loosely coupled so you can have these types, this type of flexibility and scalability. The attributes, different modalities in terms of the types of payloads, um, the special processing, whether it's third party, what type of processing for the images that you're using, things like that. Um, scalability, agility, agnosticism, we don't care. The idea is that you can put whatever you want inside it. Um, Multi-communications, legacy systems, and it's upgradable. Again, I'm trying, I don't want to belabor this, but this is brand new and there's a lot of information that we're still trying to get together ourselves. But the idea, which is very similar to Space VPX, is to allow this type of flexibility, this scalability, to adapt to different physical types of, of sensors along with the subsystems in the back end. And again, these are all focused on high performance computing, high data rate imaging systems. 